Welcome back, everyone. Sheepdog Smokey here, and hope you're having a good weekend. Um, a couple of things first, of course. Make sure you want to subscribe and turn on notifications. That way you're able to keep up with everything. But for those of you who do watch regularly, you'll know that I was out actually for a couple of days this week, uh, not posting, due to an old injury flaring up, because unfortunately I'm getting older. Um, while my doctor took good care of me and... He has me definitely on, on the road to even back to what I was just a week ago. It got me thinking that I am I need to maybe look at a few different ways to schedule my time. So, while I definitely plan to do all I can to stay on the 10s the and 4s on Monday through Friday, weekend posts are going to be a little bit different. There may be some weekends where I do, some where I don't, some where it's a regular 4 video day, some where it's more or less. Uh, so weekends are kind of a free-for-all, and uh, a lot of that comes down to I do have yard work I've got to do, I've got house things I have to do, family commitments, for example, this weekend is Father's Day. So uh, definitely you want to subscribe and turn on notifications so you know about anything that's uh, posted, because uh, there may be things that are outside the normal schedule I've put uh, for myself, but... That said, let's look at this story. Uh, it seems that House Republicans have reintroduced a bill to eliminate all gun-free school zones across the U.S. Those of you who follow me on Twitter, who have heard my uh, talks about different things, you know that this is one of the issues that I am adamantly against. One, in every sense of the word, this is insanity. Because criminals don't care about laws. Criminals have walked into police stations, they've walked into banks, they've walked into churches, into schools, they walk into your home, all of which already are illegal. They, they don't care. I've pointed this out many times. Laws serve two purposes. Well, at least two. They codify what is and is not legal. And they codify what happens if you break that law. Everything. It, it is illegal to go over the speed limit. I live in Texas, and if you look at I-35, 45, 75, 10, all of these are major highways, and most of them, at least where you're not going through a major city, are 75 miles an hour. And yes, police officers give some leeway because... Even digital uh, speedometers are not perfect. But let's say you're on I-35 between Waco and Austin, where I know it is a 75-mile-an-hour zone. You're cruising down and you're doing 90. That's illegal. The law in Texas about speeding codifies that that is a violation of state law. It also tells police officers what they may do. In the case of that, they pull you over. They write you a ticket. You pay that ticket, which is a fine of a certain amount for every mile an hour over the limit, court fees, and so on. Insurance companies will then, as is their right, probably raise your rates. But on the opposite end of the spectrum, rape, murder, both illegal. And if you choose to break those laws, those laws making those actions illegal codify what your sentence may be. So you have basically two sets of people. You have people like me, people who don't want to go to jail, they don't want to harm others, they don't want to do something that is not beneficial to society in, in every respect. Having been a firefighter, speeding makes you more of a risk to yourself and others. You can't stop as quickly, you can't swerve as quickly, all of those things. Firearms, if a criminal wants to go in and kill someone, they don't care about the repercussions. I own a firearm for home protection. As I've said, we live near a lot of predators and competition. That's it. So when I see this sign... I leave my firearm in my car, 
or if I know I'm going to somewhere that is a gun-free zone and it's not in my hometown, I leave my firearm at home. See, I used to teach, and I taught in districts that had these signs. So even though I am a law-abiding licensed firearms owner in the state of Texas, I left my firearm at home. God forbid someone who decides I don't care what the law says enters that school, I'm a sitting duck as are my students. And we have to pray that police officers arrive in time to stop the madman. And as we all know, even if your school is a block away from the police department, it's going to take at least a couple minutes to several minutes for police to respond. In the case of Parkland, they were on site and stayed outside. So this sign is an invitation to harm people. There are several school districts in many states that have changed their rules to allow teachers and administrators to carry firearms on school grounds, on duty, provided they meet certain requirements, psychological evaluation, training requirements, licensing requirements, so on and so forth. I know of a couple in Texas. There was a video I saw, and I'm going to try and find it, and if I do, I'll link to it in the description of this, where students were asked how they felt knowing that perhaps one of their teachers might be carrying a firearm. By and large, they said they felt safer. The only part of the video I did not like is where in the middle of a hallway they had people pull out the firearms to show the reporter. My response, if anybody says, hey, show me your gun, is like, what gun? That's the purpose of concealed carry. The question, is there someone here equipped to stop a crime? If you'll notice, there are certain businesses that make it very clear they don't want you coming in armed. To the point with a couple of them, I know I remember Denny's and Starbucks having incidents where store employees told on-duty police officers they would have to disarm themselves before they could come in. Those businesses typically are the ones that are targeted by burglars. Businesses that, like Academy, actually have a sign welcoming concealed carry tend not to be uh, targeted by people who want to rob the place. You see, the question stops a lot of people, and they think, I'll go somewhere else. I don't want someone to be able to fight back. Now, there are those mentally ill, so off their rocker, that they wouldn't care if it was an army base where they could see hundreds of soldiers lined up, M16s pointed at them, they would still charge and try to do things, okay? You're never going to legislate criminality or insanity out of the world. It's just not going to happen. So when it comes to things like this, I am very much opinionated, very passionate about it. You see, the question of is someone able to act against me in a way that is equal to how I can act against them stops most attacks. There are signs at the school districts that I've spoken of where very simply they say, our staff may be armed in an effort to protect our students, is it worth it? It's very similar to the kind of satirical sign of, my dog can make it to the fence in 3.2 seconds, can you? And both of those serve a purpose. See, I happen to have a German Shepherd dog. Well, it's my brother's and she lives next door. But like German Shepherds, she can cross diagonally across an acre in about eight seconds. It's what German Shepherds were bred for, protection, speed, and power. Uh, granted, she tends to not want to play if we do that, but somebody comes towards my home intending harm, and my, my German Shepherd, that's about 25 yards to my left right now, one, she's going nuts on the porch. And if that person is actually there to do harm and they try, yeah, they're going to have a bad day. And I'm going to have my firearm so I can keep them on the ground after Murphy has been called off until police arrive. 
You see, the threat of force. I attended a, a, a seminar with uh, U.S. and Texas Law Shield recently about the justified use of force. And as Texas is now a licensed open carry or concealed carry state, let's say I'm wearing my suit, I'm going to church, and I'm carrying on my hip, and someone comes in and they are just out of their gourd, screaming, making threats. I take my jacket off. It is a lawful transition from concealed to open carry. I'm not violating the law in any way, but that firearm is now in plain view of the idiot threatening the church. He continues, I place my hand on it. I draw and keep it pointed down. That is the threat of force. That threat, in the vast majority of situations, will de-escalate. That's why you see, well, one reason why, you see police officers tend to stand around resting their arm on their firearm. Now, one, I've worn that style holster. It's pretty much the perfect height to rest my forearm on. But when they walk up to your car, notice their hand is on that firearm. They don't know what they're walking up on. So by that subtle threat of, I'm ready to draw, it tends to keep situations from escalating. This sign does the opposite. This sign encourages escalations. Now, unfortunately, the House is majority Democrat, and they're going to scream and yell about Republicans wanting to put kids in harm's way by allowing people to protect them with firearms. So I guess it's just a matter of how much noise they make, how much idiocy Swalwell or Pelosi or AOC spews, and how many times they have to tell people giving up your means of protection is a good thing before they're voted out of office. Because only putting people with a brain in their head into those seats will ever accomplish anything. But I've talked long enough. Let me know what you think. As always, keep it civil. We don't learn from argument. We learn from debate. Also, please remember to like and share the video so that we can expand the conversation, and again, to subscribe and turn on notifications so that you're kept abreast of all new content as it posts. Until next time, everyone have a wonderful day.